This article lists information of animated and was made by Hans Christian Andersen original characters from Disney's The Little Mermaid franchise, covering the 1989 film, its prequel TV series, its direct-to-video sequel and prequel films, and the stage musical adaptation. Topic: The Little Mermaid. Topic: Ariel. Ariel is the title character of the franchise, save the second film in which she is a secondary character. Ariel is voiced by Jody Benson and designed by Glenn Keane. Ariel is the seventh born and the youngest daughter of King Triton and Queen Athena of the Merfolk, and over the course of the original film becomes human and marries Eric, a human prince. She is the only Disney princess to reach parenthood in Disney's animated film canon. <laughs> Eric Eric is based on the «prince» character of Hans Christian Andersen's story. The Little Mermaid, but adapted by the writer directors Ron Clements and John Musker for the film adaptation. According to the film's official novelization, Eric had just turned 18 in the film, which would make him two years older than Ariel. Eric is voiced by Christopher Daniel Barnes in the original film and Kingdom Hearts 2, by Jeff Bennett in the prequel television series, and by Rob Paulson in the direct to video sequel. For the original film, Joshua Finkel acted opposite Sherry Stoner as Ariel in providing live-action references for the animators. Prince Eric is the only prince in the Disney Princess franchise that does not sing in the original movie. Eric is a human prince who is rescued by Ariel when he almost drowns in a storm at sea. Ariel drags him to shore and sings to him, but before he can fully regain consciousness, Max and his servant Grimsby arrive, forcing Ariel to dive underwater. Eric is haunted by Ariel's voice, and searches the kingdom for her to no avail. When he crosses paths with Ariel again, she has traded her voice for legs, and though he initially finds her familiar, her lack of a voice makes him think that she cannot be the girl who rescued him. However, he brings her back to his palace and they spend time together. Eric develops feelings for Ariel, but before he can approach her about them, Ursula, disguised as a human girl named Vanessa, arrives and magically hypnotizes Eric into forgetting about Ariel and believing that she Vanessa is the one who saved his life. Eric almost marries Vanessa, but Ariel and her friends intervene, breaking Ursula's spell and restoring Ariel's voice to her. Eric realizes that Ariel is the girl he has been looking for, but before they can kiss, the sun sets and Ursula claims Ariel. Eric goes after them, diving into the sea to help Ariel. In the battle that follows, Eric climbs onto a ship and charges it towards Ursula, plunging the splintered prow into her belly. Eric manages to reach the shore, and when he wakes, he sees Ariel, transformed back into a human, and the two embrace. The film ends with their wedding. Eric makes cameo appearances in three episodes of the prequel television series, Thingamajigger a non-speaking appearance Scuttle and Ariel's Treasures. In the 2000 direct-to-video sequel, Eric is a supporting character. Although he and Ariel are happily married and they become king and queen of his land, they are threatened by the sea witch Morgana, who wishes to avenge her dead sister, Ursula. He and Ariel decide to raise their daughter Melody away from the sea, and keep her merfolk heritage secret. In the 2007 Broadway musical, the role of Eric was originated by Sean Palmer. It is explained through dialogue that Eric's father has died, and it is Grimsby's duty to help Eric find a bride so he can return to the throne properly, despite Eric's affinity for exploring the seas. Eric contributes singing vocals to the opening song, Fathoms Below, and performs two solo songs, Her Voice, a song about Eric's obsession with Ariel's voice that had been written for the original film but discarded, and One Step Closer. A new song where Eric helps Ariel express herself through dance. Eric also provides vocals in the quartet, If Only, where he expresses confusion over his attraction to Ariel, and his fear that if he finds the girl with the right voice, he might lose Ariel. A new subplot in the stage musical is a singing competition where the eligible princesses in all the land are invited to sing for Eric. The princesses perform in the song, The Contest, which is set to the tune of Ariel's song part of your world." At the end of the performance, Ariel dances for Eric, and he chooses her. The role was also performed by Drew Seeley. 
Prince Eric appears in season 3 of the ABC series Once Upon a Time, where is played by actor Gil McKinney. He first appears in the episode, Ariel, in which he was rescued by Ariel from drowning, and Ariel has used her once in a year ability to gain legs to see him at his ball. Eric is enchanted by Ariel at the ball, commenting that she appears familiar to him. Eric invites Ariel to join him on an expedition around the world which is leaving the following morning. He waits for her as long as he is able, but she doesn't come to him due to events beyond her control. It is later revealed that Eric was transported to the town of Storybrooke after the evil queen, Regina Mills cast a curse over his land. Ariel, who now has the ability to become human whenever she wants, later finds Eric working as a fisherman in Storybrooke and the two of them reunite. Topic. Sebastian Sebastian is a red Jamaican crab and a servant of King Triton, and also his main musical composer. His main song is, Under the Sea. He is voiced by Samuel E. Wright. Topic flounder Flounder is a bright yellow and blue colored tropical fish despite the name, he is not a flounder and Ariel's best friend, voiced by Jason Marin in the 1989 film, who also provided vocals in character for the tie-in music album Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. Flounder scares easily, and is prone to panicking under stressful situations like a single shark breaching the sunken ship, but when Ariel is in trouble, he comes through for her without hesitation. In the film he is the only character to give unconditional support for Ariel's fascination with human things, and at one point gives Ariel a statue of Eric as a gift. Flounder appears in all the episodes of the prequel television series, sharing constant adventures with Ariel and in the episode The Evil Manta, shown how he first met Ariel when they were children. According to the television series, Flounder's real name is Guppy No. 35. In the series, he is voiced by Eden Gross and Bradley Pierce. Flounder also appears in Jim Henson's Little Mermaid's Island where he has a twin sister named Sandy and is voiced by Veronica Taylor. Flounder has a small role in The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, where he is reunited with a grown-up Ariel and takes part in the search for Ariel and Eric's daughter Melody. He grew up and became a father himself, with five children of his own and he first meets Melody in Morgana's lair. In this film, he is voiced by Cam Clark. He has a larger role in The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, which shows an alternate version of how he first meets Ariel and later unknowingly leads her to the Catfish Club. His characterization is notably different in this movie, he does not scare as easily and is much more carefree and high-spirited. He performs beatboxing that kicks off a reprise of Jump in the Line Shake, Senora when he, Ariel, Sebastian and the Catfish Club band are on the run from Atlantica. In this film, he is voiced by Parker Gorris. Flounder appears in the Kingdom Hearts series, where his role as Ariel's friend remains. His biggest role in the series is in Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories, where Ursula kidnapped him to force Ariel to give her the trident. He also sings his part in the song called, A New Day is Dawning. He also appears in Disney Princess, Enchanted Journey as Ariel's sidekick and is voiced by Anthony Skillman. He is also a remote-controlled playable character in the same game seen holding a big conch shell on his head with your help to catch the voice orbs. At the Disney theme parks, Flounder makes cameo appearances in the Mickey's Full Har Magic 3D show and in the Hong Kong Disneyland version of It's a Small World. He has also appeared in the parks as a walk-around character, but mostly in parades, shows and special events such as Mickey's Pirate and Princess Party. Flounder appears in the stage adaptation of The Little Mermaid. His supporting role is similar as in the film, but he does not give Ariel the statue of Eric, and does not help Ariel reach Eric's wedding barge, as the Vanessa subplot has been removed. However, Flounder performs a new song titled, She's in Love, which he sings with Ariel's sisters when they notice that Ariel has been acting, fishy lately. The stage role was originated by Cody Hanford and J.J. Singleton, but the two actors had to leave the show when their height overshot that of Sierra Bogus, who originated Ariel. The role was taken over by Trevor Brown and Brian Daddario. On the original Broadway cast recording, Brian Daddario performs as Flounder. Topic. Scuttle Scuttle Scully, is a seagull and friend of Ariel, voiced by Buddy Hackett in the 1989 film and 2000 sequel. 
He appears as an expert on human objects with whom Ariel consults about items she salvages after she and Flounder get chased by Glut, though his identifications consist of nonsense. He wrongly names a forker, Dingle Hopper, and says that it is used as a comb, and a smoking piper, Snarfblatt, while claiming it works like a trumpet. Despite his erroneous information on human things, Scuttle provides support and advice when he learns that Ariel has to win Eric's heart in three days. On the third day, Scuttle is the one who discovers that Vanessa, the woman Eric has decided to marry instead, is actually Ursula. He immediately tells Ariel this information, and helps stall the wedding with help from other marine creatures so to allow Ariel to arrive and confront Eric, as well as smashing Ursula's shell that held Ariel's voice, thus restoring it and freeing Eric from Ursula's spell. Scuttle appears in a small role in The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, where he helps Ariel find her daughter Melody, who has run away. Scuttle appears in two episodes of the third season of the prequel television series in which he is voiced by Maurice LaMarche. The episodes he appears in are, Scuttle, where Ariel, Flounder and Sebastian meet him for the first time, in which he claims his name was originally, Scuttlebutt, but he changed it, for obvious reasons, and, Island of Fear. In these episodes, Scuttle's explanation of human things is a mixture of correct and erroneous. Scuttle also made a cameo appearance in an episode of Quack Pack. In The Little Mermaid, Songs from the Sea, Scuttle performs a song called, The Scuttle Strut, on track 3. Scuttle appears in the stage adaptation of the original film, where he sings two songs, Human Stuff, where he explains the human things Ariel has brought to him, and Positivity, where he encourages a now human Ariel to be positive in achieving her goal of winning Eric. The role is originated by Eddie Corbich. In the stage musical, Scuttle has a group of seagull friends, and together they perform a tap dance during the Positivity number. Scuttle has a non speaking cameo in The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, appearing when Marina is on a rock at the surface, animated the same way with Ariel when she sings a reprise for Part of Your World and is splashed by a wave. Scuttle will appear in the upcoming live-action adaptation of The Little Mermaid. This version will be portrayed as a diving bird, in order for the character to be featured in underwater scenes. Ursula Ursula appears in the 1989 film. She is voiced by Pat Carroll, who also provides her vocals for all the canonical animated media. Ursula is based on the Sea Witch, Sorceress character in Hans Christian Andersen's story, The Little Mermaid. Triton Triton is the king of Atlantica and the father of Ariel and her sisters. In the Hans Christian Andersen version, the Sea King is unnamed and is not prejudiced towards humans. In the first two films, the TV series and the Kingdom Hearts games, he was voiced by Kenneth Mars. In the prequel film, he is voiced by Jim Cummings. According to the film's directors Ron Clements and John Musker, the clashes of personality between him and Ariel is because they are both strong-willed and independent, and it is revealed in the television series that Triton and Ariel are stubborn. Triton wields a powerful trident, which is the source of his supposedly unlimited power. The character is inspired by the son of the Greek sea god Poseidon, although the actual Triton is from Greek mythology and has two finned feet. In The Little Mermaid, Triton is prejudiced towards humans, believing them to be nothing but savage fish eaters, and Ariel's fascination with humans has caused their relationship to become very strained. According to Triton, it is illegal to make contact between humans and merpeople, and he orders his servant, Sebastian, to look after Ariel. When Triton discovers that Ariel saved the life of and has fallen in love with a human, he loses his temper and destroys most of her grotto filled with her collection of human artifacts despite his daughter's objections, this action of his ultimately damages their relationship. Devastated by his recent actions, Triton orders a search for Ariel to apologize, not knowing that she has accepted Ursula's deal and become a human. Triton is distraught over his daughter's disappearance, and when Sebastian arrives with news of Ursula's scheme, Triton goes to Ursula, offering to take his daughter's place. He is transformed into a polyp, but when Ursula is killed by Eric, he is restored to his original form along with the merpeople and regains his crown and trident. 
Realizing that Ariel truly loves Eric and that all his beliefs about all humans in general being bad were completely wrong, Triton willingly transforms his daughter back into a human. Triton is a regular character in the prequel television series, in which he is explicitly called the son of Poseidon. A number of episodes show him getting into conflict with Ariel, but it is always resolved in a positive manner, showing a close relationship between father and daughter. For example, in the episode Charmed, when Ariel gets a human charm bracelet locked around her wrist, she could not return because Triton would lose his temper again after he destroyed a magnifying glass she discovered earlier. However, after Ariel gets lost, Triton eventually finds her and uses the key to unlock the bracelet and feels apologetic for his actions. In the episode, Red, Triton regresses into a young merboy, reversing the role as Ariel has to worry and take care of him instead. As a young boy, his nickname is Red, for his red hair. Coincidentally, as a boy, Triton himself is fascinated with humans and human objects, in contrast to his prejudice towards humans as an adult. He sometimes agrees with Ariel in some episodes, such as Land of the Dinosaurs in which he understands that the dinosaurs are good after they have been thawed. Triton appears in the sequel The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, in which he has learned to trust humans and interact with them. His weakness is his love for his granddaughter Melody, which is exploited by Morgana. However, when Triton regains his trident, he traps Morgana in a massive ice cube. In the 2008 director DVD prequel The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, the prologue shows Triton with his wife Athena. Athena is accidentally crushed to death by a pirate ship, and a distraught Triton bans music from Atlantica and forces everyone to follow a strict daily schedule. Ariel's free-spirited personality causes a strain on their relationship. He eventually comes to realize his mistakes, pardons Sebastian, lifts the ban on music and appoints Sebastian as his court composer. Jim Cummings replaces Kenneth Mars as the voice of King Triton, due to Mars's pancreatic cancer diagnosis. In the stage musical, Triton is Ursula's older brother, and reveals that a reason he is overprotective of Ariel is because she reminds him of her late mother. In this version, Triton and Ursula are equals, and when their father died, they were each given equal share of the sea and one magical item each. Triton received the trident and Ursula received a magic nautilus shell. When Ursula began to abuse her power, Triton exiled her, though he did not take away her Nautilus shell. The musical contains new songs that were written for his character, That World Above, Reprise, in which he confronts Ariel in her grotto and destroys it, If Only, Quartet, in which he expresses regret over his behavior towards Ariel, and If Only, Reprise, in which he lets Ariel go to be with Eric. The stage role is originated by Norm Lewis. In the Kingdom Hearts series of video games, Triton still plays the role of overprotective father and king of Atlantica. In the first game, his relationship with Ariel becomes strained due to his daughter's desire to see other worlds, and he initially distrusts Sora, Donald and Goofy when they first arrive in Atlantica, having somehow heard of the negative part of the Keyblade legend, but eventually respects Sora when Ursula is defeated and locks the world's keyhole. In Kingdom Hearts 2, Triton's relationship with Ariel is strained, this time thanks to Ariel's fascination with the human world. He asks Sora, Donald and Goofy to take part in the music concert with Ariel, but Sora ignores Triton's request and helps Ariel become human to find and fall in love with Eric. He is also part of the song called, A New Day is Dawning. After Ursula is defeated once again, he respectfully bids a final farewell to Sora. He also appears in The Princess and the Frog as a parade float. Topic: Athena, Alana, Adela, Aquita, Arista and Andrina. Ariel has 6 older sisters named Athena, Alana, Adela, Aquita, Arista and Andrina. They are the maternal aunts of Melody and the sisters-in-law of Eric. In the 1989 film, they are voiced by Kimmy Robertson and Caroline Vasicek, and perform the song, Daughters of Triton. Later on in the film, Athena, Andrina, Adela, and Aquita make a brief appearance together with Ariel in what appears to be the palace dressing room intended for all the sisters. In that scene, Ariel emerges from behind a curtain of seaweed swimming dreamily and humming a few lines from, Part of Your World. The sisters notice the change in Ariel's conduct and conclude in front of their father that Ariel is in love. 
All six sisters appear again in the end of the film together with Triton, smiling and waving to Ariel after she gets married to Eric. In the second film, the sisters play a minor role with only Atina, Andrina, Aquita and Adela having dialogue. The age order of the sisters is debatable. In the original film, they sing, "'Daughter of Triton' and announce themselves in this order, Aquita, Andrina, Arista, Atina, Adela and Alana. This had led many to believe that was the proper birth order. Various official Disney media that was released from 1989 onward also seemed to use this as their birth order. The comic, Serpent Teen, stated that Aquita is the eldest and the future ruler, but the comic, Underwater Wedding, clearly stated that Atina was the eldest. The 2008 film The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning also made it clear that Atina is the oldest. Also, the DVD's Vanity Game feature states that the age order is Atina 21, Alana 20, Adela 19, Aquita 18, Arista 17, Andrina 16 and Ariel 15. However, in the same film, Adela states that she is two years older than Ariel, meaning she would only be 17. Atina has an orange tail and a matching seashell bra. She has green eyes and wears her light brown hair in an updo with a thorny orange crown. In the prequel film, Atina is the first-born and oldest sister. She's a bookworm and the most clever of her sisters. She's the voice of the conscience and gives advice to her sisters, especially Ariel. Atina has the motherly role of the family and blames herself for her mother's death because her tail fins were stuck in a rock when the pirate ship bore down on the kingdom, and her mother swam out into the open to free her, causing Athena to be crushed by the bow of the ship. She is responsible and loves her sisters and cares for them as their mother. Aside from Ariel herself, she appears to be the sister who was closest to Athena. She even keeps a picture of her mother and father on her vanity and writes in her diary that she wants to be just like her mother when she becomes queen. She is a minor character in the first and second film and the TV series and is a main character in the prequel. She's voiced by Caroline Vasicek in the first film, Kath Susi in the TV series, and Kari Walgren in the prequel. Alana has a pink tail and a purple seashell bra. She has violet eyes and wears her black hair with a small pink crown. In the prequel film she's the second-born sister and is also the glamorous one who makes her own beauty products. She's a minor character in the first film and TV series and is a main character in the prequel. She's voiced by Kimmy Robertson in the first film and TV series, and by Jennifer Hale in the prequel. Adela has a yellow tail and a chartreuse green seashell bra. Apart from Ariel, she's the only sister whose tail doesn't match her shell bra. She has teal eyes and wears her dark brown hair in a ponytail with golden pearl decorations. She is chubby in the TV series, but in the third and original films, she has the same elegant, slim figure as her sisters. In the third film's extra content, she's the third-born sister and is 19, however, she states in the film that she is two years older than Ariel making her 17 and presumably the fifth-born sister. In this film, she is boy crazy who loves to kiss boys and flirts with them. She is a minor character in the first and second film and the TV series and is a main character in the prequel. She's voiced by Kimmy Robertson in the first film, Sherry Lynn in the TV series, and Tara Strong in the prequel. Aquita has a blue tail and a matching seashell bra. She has brown eyes and wears her brown hair in a ponytail with white pole decorations. In the prequel film she's the fourth-born sister. She has a little pink seahorse doll named Mr. Fuzzy Finkel. She argues with Arista because she steals her things and is hysterical and a very bad dancer. She is a minor character in the first and second film and the TV series and is a main character in the prequel. She is voiced by Caroline Vasicek in the first film, Mona Marshall in the TV series, and Grey Delisle in the prequel. Arista has a red tail and a matching seashell bra. She has ice blue eyes and wears her pale blonde hair in a ponytail with dark pink decorations. In the prequel film she's the fifth-born sister and is a ditzy, sweet-natured kleptomaniac who borrows Aquata's personal belongings without permission and argues with her every time. She also has a love of music and quickly masters the trombone when she and her sisters watch Sebastian and his band perform. She is a minor character in the first film and is also a minor character in the TV series and is a main character in the prequel. She's voiced by Kimmy Robertson in the first film, Mary Kay Bergman in the TV series, and Grey Delisle in the prequel. Andrina has a purple tail and a magenta seashell bra. 
She has hazel eyes and wears her blonde hair in a bun top with a pink shell decoration. In the prequel film she's the sixth-born sister and is a humorous genius who likes jokes and sarcasm. She is a minor character in the first and second film in the TV series and is a main character in the prequel. She's voiced by Kimmy Robertson in the first film, Kathy Cavadini in the TV series, and Tara Strong in the prequel. The sisters appear in the Broadway stage musical version, in which they perform the song, She's in Love, with Flounder to describe Ariel's new behavior after saving Eric. The sisters also make in character appearances on the music albums, Songs from the Sea. Topic. Glut Glut is a great white shark and a minor antagonist of the film. He appears at the beginning of the film where Ariel and Flounder are exploring the sunken ship and he pursues them trying to eat them but gets stuck in an anchor and was not seen for the rest of the film. He makes minor appearances in the television series and also appears as a boss in the Kingdom Hearts where the player at first can escape fighting him, but he must be defeated later to enter Ursula's lair. Topic. Flotsam and Jetsam Flotsam and Jetsam are Ursula's Green Moray Eel minions, voiced by Paddy Edwards in the 1989 film. They do Ursula's bidding and act as her spies, keeping their eye on the events unfolding in and around Atlantica. They are tasked with following Ariel and reporting her actions back to Ursula. They eventually manipulate Ariel into visiting Ursula in order to gain human legs. They are ultimately killed in the film's climax when Ursula accidentally destroys them with King Triton's trident after Ariel sabotages Ursula's attempt to kill Eric. Out of remorse for killing her minions, Ursula mourns for them before turning her rage towards Ariel and Eric. Flotsam and Jetsam appear in the prequel television series alongside Ursula. They also appear in the Broadway stage musical, where the roles were originated by Tyler Maynard and Derek Baskin. Topic. Grimsby Grimsby is Eric's manservant and confidant. He is voiced by Ben Wright in the original film. In the opening scene, Grimsby is shown as not having the stomach for the sea, and dismisses the sailors' stories about merpeople living under the sea. Through dialogue, Grimsby reveals that he worries for Eric, and has been hoping that the prince will settle down with the right girl. For Eric's birthday, Grimsby presents a statue he had commissioned of Eric in a dramatic pose. Though Eric and Max disapprove of the statue, Grimsby is proud of it. Later, when Ariel has become human, Grimsby grows fond of her and encourages Eric to give up his dream girl for one. A flesh and blood. Grimsby appears briefly in the sequel, in which he is voiced by K. E. Cooter. In the 2007 stage musical adaptation, Grimsby says that the reason he wants Eric to marry is because he Grimsby had made a promise to Eric's late father to ensure it. Though Grimsby is reluctant to believe Eric's story of being saved from drowning by a girl, he comes up with the idea of holding a contest in which the princesses of the land are to sing for Eric, in the hopes that one of them will be the right girl. In the stage musical, the role is originated by Jonathan Freeman. Topic. Max Max is an old English sheepdog and Eric's pet. Unlike all the other animals in the film, Max is minimally anthropomorphic and does not speak in the human language. Max's barking and growling is provided by Frank Welker throughout his animated incarnations. During Eric's birthday celebration, Max catches Ariel's scent and tracks her down, licking her on the cheek in an apparent show of affection. When the ship catches fire, the sailors escape safely, but Max is left behind. Seeing this, Eric dives out of his lifeboat and climbs back on board, grabbing Max and tossing him to safety. Later, when Eric is brought to shore safely by Ariel, Max smells out his master and rushes out to greet him. Max is also able to smell Ariel who is hidden offshore behind rocks, but Eric does not understand his barking. After Ariel has made her deal with Ursula and is brought to shore as a human, Max leads Eric to her, recognizing her as the same person, though Eric cannot. Eventually, Ursula herself appears in the guise of a human girl named Vanessa to distract Eric from kissing Ariel before the third day is up, but Max is the only character in the human world who can fully see Vanessa for who she really is and is seen growling furiously at her, and during her and Eric's wedding, she kicks him directly in the face. 
When Scuttle and the sea animals try to stop the wedding, Max assists and gets his revenge by biting her in her rear end, giving Scuttle the leverage to break the conch shell containing Ariel's voice. At Eric and Ariel's wedding, Max gives affection licks on their faces. Max makes a few brief appearances in the prequel television series and the direct-to-video sequel, and is the only named character of the original film other than Vanessa who does not appear in the 2007 stage musical. <laughs> Louis Louis is the chef in Eric's castle, voiced by René Aubergenois. His accent implies that he is French, and he performs the song, Les Poissons, in which he happily cooks seafood in the castle kitchen. According to dialogue by Carlotta the housemaid, Louis' specialty is stuffed crab. This puts him at odds with Sebastian, who accidentally ends up in his kitchen and frantically tries to get away from him. This rivalry is extended to the wedding in the finale, where the chef again chases Sebastian in an attempt to cut him up. Sebastian defeats him by knocking him out with a wooden plank shattering his teeth. The rivalry is shown again in the sequel The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, with no change between the two. He also stars in one of the episodes of Disney's Marsupilami and Raw Tunage as a noise-hating hotel guest with his victim, Sebastian as the hotel manager. Louis also makes an appearance in the episode, Ariel's Treasures, where he accidentally steps on a whisk called a Whirly Twirly by Ariel and it slips into the water when he is making recipes. In the 2007 stage musical, Louis is head of a group of chefs that work in Eric's castle. He performs the song, Les Poissons. A reprise is performed by Louis and all the other chefs as they present their fish masterpieces to Ariel, Eric and Grimsby. Topic. Carlotta. Carlotta works in Eric's castle in a role suggested to be similar to a housekeeper, though it is not stated outright. She reappears in the sequel, apparently continuing her role after Eric and Ariel are married and have a daughter of their own. She is voiced by Edie McClurg. In the 2007 stage musical, Carlotta develops an affectionate maternal relationship with Ariel, whom she grows fond of. Carlotta sings in the musical number, Beyond My Wildest Dreams where Carlotta berates the other servants who gossip about Ariel. Near the end of the musical there is a contest where the princesses of the land are to sing for Eric, in the hope that one of them will have the voice of the girl who saved his life. Carlotta is the one who encourages Ariel to step forward and dance for him in order to show her love for him. <laughs> Topic. Television series Urchin Urchin is an orphaned merboy with an olive green tail and is one of the main characters of the prequel television series, in which he is a close friend of Ariel, Sebastian and Flounder, and often goes on adventures with them. He is voiced by Danny Cooksey. Urchin first appears in the fourth episode of the series, Urchin. In it, Urchin is seen to be an orphan who lives by himself and wants badly to have friends. He is approached by small-time villains Lobster Mobster and Dar Shrimp, who bring him into their gang and use him to steal food for them. Urchin manages to steal food from the palace, but in doing so is confronted by Ariel. Ariel tries to befriend Urchin, who at first rebuffs her. Urchin shows his true colors when he helps Ariel escape after she is kidnapped by Lobster Mobster and Dar Shrimp. He even stops Crab Louie from stealing from the royal treasury. This earns him a kiss from Ariel. A friendship is forged when Urchin follows Ariel's advice and apologizes to King Triton for his behavior. In the episode, Trident True, Urchin plays pranks on Ariel's sisters Arista, Atina, Andrina, and Adela and buys a Father's Day present for King Triton, implying his closeness with the royal family, and Ariel's sisters admit that they look on him as their own little brother. <laughs> Gabriella Gabriella is one of Ariel's friends. She is a deaf mermaid with a pink tail and matching shells who communicates with sign language. She appears in two episodes, Wish Upon a Starfish, and Ariel's Treasures. In her first appearance, before she meets Ariel, she sees her singing the first part of a song called, 
daring to dance, and sees her twirling about a music box with a figure of a ballerina on top of it. Ariel stops abruptly upon seeing her, but Gabriella encourages her to continue. She wishes to be able to sing as beautifully as Ariel, and she identifies with Ariel's desire to dance. She decides to journey with Ariel to visit the magical wishing starfish, passing through many dangers along the way. She is saddened when the magical wishing starfish proves to be a fraud, but Ariel reassures her that she can express her feelings just as well through sign language. She joins Ariel in the second part of Daring to Dance. In her second appearance, she returns to Atlantica for a visit. She and Ariel gush over Ariel's new additions to her collection of human objects, as well as the music box that Ariel found when they first met. Unbeknownst to either of them, Ursula has launched another scheme to take over Atlantica, this time casting a spell that causes Ariel's treasures to come to life and terrorize people. She is confused and shocked when the treasures come alive, but she works with Ariel to break Ursula's spell. Topic. Ollie. Ollie is a blue vocal octopus who appears in two episodes, Wish Upon a Starfish, and Ariel's Treasures. He is the close friend and interpreter of Gabriella, a mute mermaid. He has spots on the sides of his head and a patch on his left eye. In his first appearance, he is shown with Gabriella, watching Ariel sing. After Ariel notices them, he explains Gabriella's disability and introduces himself. He is also the one to tell the tale of the magical wishing starfish, and he accompanies them along the way. In his second appearance, he is visiting Atlantica with Gabriella and helps her stop Ursula's plot to take over the kingdom. He is voiced by Gabrielle Damon. <laughs> Pearl Pearl is a fun-loving mermaid with a blue tail and matching shells who is familiar with Ariel and Alana. She is blonde, with a blue tail and blue, ruffle-edged shells. She makes her first appearance in episode, Red, at a party held by Ariel, arriving with a crowd of friends on, Squid Cycles. She is apparently very popular and seems friendly, if a bit snobbish. She comments that the party is a bit dull, and Ariel requests that the live band play louder, against her father's instructions. She leaves with the other guests when Triton puts a halt to the party. In her second appearance in episode, Electric City, she shows up at the palace to pick up Alana, who has been invited to a party at her house. Ariel is shocked and impressed when Pearl comments that her parents allow her to do as she pleases, and is invited to join them. As they are leaving, Pearl spies Triton's new chariot and coerces Ariel into driving the three mermaids in it while she gives directions. After a few minutes, Alana notes that they are not heading for Pearl's house, they are instead going to Electric City, a party town reminiscent of Las Vegas, where Pearl is going to meet a few friends. They arrive and are having a fairly good time until a gang known as the Orange Ruffies shows up. Pearl taunts them, then challenges them to a chariot race. Ariel and Alana try to reason with Pearl, but she wants to see the race through to the end. They start the race, but quickly lose control of the chariot in the rush of the current. It is only Ariel's quick thinking and the timely appearance of Triton that saves them. Pearl is shocked that her parents bothered coming, but happy that they cared about her. Her mother states that she will be keeping a closer eye on her daughter from now on. She is voiced by Cree Summer. Topic. Spot Spot is a fun-loving killer whale calf whose name is based on a single white spot which is birthmarked on his tail. In the episode called, Whale of a Tail, when the human poachers get nearby, he frightenedly swims away from his real family until Ariel encounters him with a little love. She cares for him until she lets him go to be with his real family. He returns in, Save the Whale. As a grown-up whale and, as Sebastian announces him, he excitedly begins to perform for the citizens of Atlantica until he gets caught. Topic. Simon Simon is a sea dragon. Imprisoned in cave and looking to be rescued. Simon writes a message and puts it in a bottle and with some luck, Ariel, Sebastian, and Flounder find the letter, Brave Danger in route to the cave, and then they face a giant sea dragon. 
The dragon turns out to be Simon himself, the writer of the message, who's looking to have a party with some new friends. Bringing Simon home to King Triton poses another challenge until Simon helps King Triton to save Atlantica and its merpeople from an invasion of evil sea anemones. He is voiced by Brian Cummings. Topic. Dudley Dudley is an elderly sea turtle who also serves somewhat of an assistant to King Triton besides Sebastian. Dudley mumbles when he speaks and does not swim like other sea turtles in this show, instead he walks slowly along the sea floor like a land turtle and keeps important documents within his shell when he retracts his head. His conversation is always interrupted by his employer as he understands what the former is about to say. He is voiced by Dave Coolier. Topic. Archimedes Archimedes is a merman scholar, explorer and adventurer who is fascinated with humans, particularly human objects, like Ariel. He wants to know as much about the human world as possible. Because of his fascination with humans, he is ostracized and disliked by his own people, as his only friend is Ariel. Because Archimedes goes to the surface very often, his knowledge on human culture is far more accurate than Ariel's, prior to the latter becoming human herself and her marriage to Eric. Due to Archimedes being ostracized by the merpeople, he lives in an abandoned sunken ship, in the wilderness outside of Atlantica, is also where he keeps his collection of human objects. Initially, unlike Ariel, he has directly met humans, he has even interacted with them. He is voiced by Rod McEwen. Topic. Hans Christian Andersen A character based on Hans Christian Andersen, the author of the original Little Mermaid fairy tale appears in the episode, Metal Fish. He is voiced by Mark Hamill. Based on rumors he hears from other sailors about the existence of merfolk, he attempts verify these claims by exploring the undersea world with the invention of his primitive submarine. While exploring the undersea world, his sub springs a leak and his steering controls are affected causing his sub to lose control and eventually sink to the bottom. However, to his surprise he encounters Ariel, to which his claims are verified. Later on, Archimedes, Sebastian, Flounder, the Crab Scouts, and even King Triton appear to assist Anderson's damaged vessel back to the surface. At the end of this episode, the character is inspired by the encounter to write the story of the Little Mermaid. This encounter contradicts the idea that Ariel's first face-to-face -face contact with humans is with Prince Eric, and forces Ariel to confront her father with the fact that she, Triton, and all merfolk are half-human when she appeals to Triton for help in saving Anderson's life. Topic. Lobster Mobster and Dar Shrimp Lobster Mobster and Da Shrimp are a lobster and shrimp duo who are bumbling con artists and constantly antagonize Ariel and her friends and are recurring antagonists from the television series. They are modeled after the stereotypes of the gangsters from the 1920s. Lobster Mobster is voiced by Joe Alasky and Da Shrimp is voiced by David Lander. Topic. Manta. Manta is a recurring villain in the TV series. Although his exact age is unknown, he appears to be potentially ageless as an individual is referenced in a legend as nearly destroying Atlantica who was imprisoned in an undersea volcano many years before the time of the series. As it so happens, the character is discovered imprisoned within and freed from an undersea volcano by a well-meaning Ariel, whom the Manta dupes into releasing him. He then begins spreading hatred and discord amongst the population of Atlantica, nearly causing the kingdom to self-destruct from his actions. During this initial appearance the Manta appeared to have the power of mental hypnosis or else some form of telepathy. Ariel manages, with the help of Flounder and their friends to defeat the Manta. He then became a recurring character, intent on taking control of Atlantica for himself. He later has a son, Little Evil who ironically enough, has no true evil or malevolent aspects to his personality and becomes a friend of Ariel's, which also results in his father's redemption. He is voiced by Tim Curry. <laughs> Howling Harefish 
Howling harefishes are monstrous fish and the Atlantican equivalent of a werewolf that when a normal fish gets bitten becomes cursed in TV series. The cure is that a school of silver fish will turn a howling harefish back into a normal fish. The only howling harefish that speaks is Flounder who turned into a howling harefish. The Little Mermaid 2 – Return to the Sea Melody Melody is the daughter of Eric and Ariel, the niece of Ariel's sisters and the granddaughter of King Triton and Queen Athena. The celebration of her birth opens the film, during which her parents sail out to sea to present her to King Triton and the merfolk. The celebration is interrupted by Morgana, who threatens to hurt Melody if Triton does not hand over the trident. Eric and Ariel manage to save Melody, but because Morgana escapes, Ariel decides that the sea is too dangerous for her daughter. Until Morgana is found, Ariel vows to keep all knowledge of the sea from her, including her mermaid heritage. A magical locket that King Triton had made for Melody for the occasion is reluctantly thrown into the sea. Melody grows up banned from entering the sea and is not told why, but by her twelfth birthday has been regularly sneaking out of the palace to swim in secret. On said birthday, Melody finds the locket with her name, and questions Ariel about it. Ariel and Melody argue, and before Ariel can apologize and explain, Melody runs away from the castle in a boat. Melody is discovered by Undertow and convinced to meet Morgana, who uses Melody's love of the sea against her. Morgana transforms Melody into a mermaid, promising her that the transformation will last forever if Melody retrieves the trident from Triton, claiming that he stole it from Morgana. Wanting to be a mermaid forever, Melody agrees. While searching for the trident, Melody befriends a penguin named Tip and a walrus named Dash, and they join her in her search. Melody succeeds in stealing the trident, and returns to Morgana at the same time that her mother Ariel, who has been turned back into a mermaid in order to find Melody, also arrives. Melody is angered by Ariel's decision to lie to her, and gives Morgana the trident. Morgana reveals her true intentions to Melody, and traps her in a cave by sealing the entrance with a thick layer of ice. Soon afterward, Morgana's spell on Melody wears off, causing her to revert into a human and nearly drowning. Tip and Dash manage to free her and drag her to the shore. Morgana uses the trident to subjugate the merfolk, but Melody, no longer a mermaid, is unaffected and starts to climb the cliff. She secretly sneaks up behind the witch and takes back the trident, causing the others to be freed from her spell. Melody tells her to stay back but turns the wrong end of the trident to her. Morgana grabs Melody's foot and pulls her to her in order to take the trident back, but Melody stabs her in the tentacle with it. Melody then manages to toss the trident back to Triton but gets pushed off the ice cliff by Morgana, Dash saves her. Triton turns the tables on Morgana and encases her in ice. In the aftermath, Melody apologizes to Eric and Ariel for her actions, and Ariel apologizes for not telling Melody the truth. Triton offers Melody the option of becoming a mermaid permanently but Melody declines. Instead she uses the trident to disintegrate the wall between the palace and the sea, thus reuniting both sides of her family. She is voiced by Tara Strong. Melody performs one song in the film, For a Moment, in which Ariel, voiced by Jodie Benson, also provides vocals. The character, Melody, is also a playable character in the PlayStation game, The Little Mermaid 2, which is based on the two movies. She becomes playable after Ariel's story arc has finished and the player is prompted to play as Melody in the chapter called, A New Beginning. <laughs> Morgana Morgana is the younger sister of the deceased Ursula. Like Ursula, Morgana is half octopus, having tentacles instead of a tail, but unlike Ursula, Morgana has eight tentacles instead of six, which, in addition to her thin stature, make Morgana's appearance more squid-like. Also, her skin is greenish-gray, unlike Ursula, who has light lavender skin. Morgana has three minions, a tiger shark named Undertow, and a pair of manta rays called Cloak and Dagger. Her voice is provided by Pat Carroll. Morgana's prime motivation is to prove her superiority over Ursula, who was the favored child of their mother. She also wanted to avenge Ursula's death. 
However, she is not as powerful as Ursula and lacks her subtlety and deviousness, though she is highly cunning in her own right. She openly attacks Melody's birthday party and uses her as a hostage to gain Triton's trident, a ploy that fails due to Ariel's quick thinking. Morgana escapes, and for twelve years eludes Triton's efforts to find her. Morgana eventually meets twelve-year-old Melody, who has rebelled against her mother's overprotective ways. Morgana lures Melody with the promise of becoming a mermaid, using the last of Ursula's magic potion to transform Melody temporarily into a mermaid. Morgana asks Melody to get the trident for her, claiming herself to be its rightful owner. Morgana succeeds in getting the trident thanks to Melody, and proclaims herself as the new ruler of the Seven Seas. She is eventually stopped by Melody, who steals the trident back and gives it to King Triton. Triton then encases Morgana in an iceberg, and she is left to sink to the bottom of the ocean and was never seen again. Topic. Tip and Dash Tip and Dash are supporting characters in The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea and Friends of Melody. Tip is an emperor penguin voiced by Max Casella, and Dash is a walrus voiced by Stephen First. Their names are derived from the convention of Morse code which uses dots or tips and dashes to communicate messages. In the film, Tip and Dash are established odd couple best friends whom Melody encounters when she has been transformed into a mermaid. She learns that the duo want to be heroes, but find it difficult to do so when Tip is a braggart who exaggerates his accomplishments and Dash is openly a coward. With a big help to save the baby penguin for her mother, Tip and Dash join the other penguins to extend the form of a ladder just before the red-eyed hammerhead shark scares them all into a big pile. Rejected by other penguins, Tip and Dash join Melody on her journey to retrieve the trident for Morgana. In the final battle, both characters find their inner courage and help to save the day. The duo perform the song, Tip and Dash, with Melody. Topic. Undertow Undertow, voiced by Clancy Brown, is a minion of Morgana. When the film opens, Undertow is a large purple and black colored tiger shark, but during the opening fight, he is zapped by the magic of King Triton's trident and transformed into a small, piranha-like fish so he can't eat or harm Melody. Undertow spends the next 12 years as a piranha. After Melody rebels against her mother, Undertow convinces Melody to visit Morgana, who manipulates her into fetching the trident. When Melody retrieves the trident, Morgana uses its magic to restore Undertow to his original form. During the final fight, Undertow battles Melody's friends Tip and Dash, and crashes into a wall of ice and all his teeth break and fall out. He is not seen again afterwards but was most likely killed upon impact with the ice wall. Topic. Cloak and Dagger Cloak and Dagger are dark blue manta rays and Morgana's henchmen. Unlike most of the animals in the film, they don't speak, and perform mostly physical duties for Morgana, either by pulling her or someone of interest to her. Topic. The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning Topic. Athena Athena was Triton's wife, queen of Atlantica, and the mother of Ariel, Aquita, Andrina, Arista, Atina, Adela and Alana, Eric's mother-in-law and Melody's maternal grandmother. Her speaking voice is provided by Lorelei Hill Budders, and her singing voice is provided by Andrea Robinson. She appears in the opening prologue of the prequel, in which she is at first shown singing her and Triton's special song, Athena's song to the girls before bedtime. She is then seen relaxing in a cove on the ocean surface with her husband, children and other merfolk. Triton gives her a music box that plays their song as an anniversary present. The fun ceases when a pirate ship appears and attacks the merpeople, during which Athena is crushed to death by the ship, whilst trying to save the music box. Triton responds to this tragedy by banning music from Atlantica. Prior to this film, Ariel's mother had been mentioned before in the prequel television series, but had then remained nameless. It is never actually stated, but it is quite likely that it was Athena's death, at the hands of humans, that caused Triton's prejudice towards them. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Marina del Rey. Marina del Rey, voiced by Sally Field, is a mermaid and the governess of King Triton's seven daughters, in charge of enforcing Triton's distant and formal parenting style and is the main antagonist. She feels she has been stuck as the governess for too long, and her primary motivation is to take over Sebastian's job as the king's attaché. She temporarily succeeds after getting Sebastian, Flounder, and their secret music band sent to prison as music was forbidden from Atlantica at the time but upon learning of the gang's escape with Ariel, Marina resolves to kill them all by sending her electric eels after them. Marina is eventually caught, and Triton sends her to prison for her crimes. <laughs> Benjamin Benjamin is a light green manatee in Marina's sidekick. Unlike Marina, Benjamin is a softie who loves Ariel and her sisters, and wishes Marina would be nice. He is voiced by Jeff Bennett. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Catfish Club Band. The Catfish Club Band are a quartet house band in the Catfish Club, the underground music club in Atlantica that exists in opposition to King Triton's ban on music. Their bandleader and vocalist is Sebastian, who also plays maracas. Other members are Ray Ray, a sky blue manta ray who plays the bass, voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, Cheeks, a green blowfish who plays the saxophone, voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, Ink Spot, a violet octopus who plays the piano, voiced by Rob Paulson, Shelbo, a teal sea turtle who plays the drums, voiced by Jim Cummings. Topic: Others. Topic. Gertrude Gertrude is mentioned by one of the maids who are washing clothes. 